If you will take out your Bibles, we want to turn to the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 4. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. That's found on page 1,669 in your pew Bibles, if you'd like to follow along. This is what God's Word says. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Well, let's state the obvious right out of the gate on this Mother's Day. Parenting is a very difficult assignment. Amen? It does not matter um, what age the children are. It is not easy. Now, for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit is, how we connect with the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit empowers us. So let me state a second obvious thing. Moms. Do not attempt parenting without the aid of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you're guessing. You're taking a shot in the dark. You might get it right. You might not. With the Holy Spirit, there's an opportunity to connect with our loving Heavenly Father who can connect us to our children in a much stronger way. So what does it look like to be a godly mother? Well, in this text, first of all, it talks about godly mother's honor. And and, and it starts when it says, children, obey your parents. It says, honor your mother and father. Last time I checked, we're all children of somebody. Amen? So, So Scripture's calling us to honor our parents. What is that about? The word honor in Hebrew in the Old Testament, this comes from the Ten Commandments. And the word for honor is the Hebrew word kavod. Kavod is a word that comes first from the marketplace. It's about weighing an object and knowing how heavy it is. You know, you can't buy a head of cabbage if you don't know how much it weighs because you pay for cabbage by the pound. So, so similarly, this word kavod is about how heavy things are. And this text is calling us to consider the weight or the weightiness of our parents and our parents' opinion. After all, they have raised us and have often endured much greater hardships than we have. We may know part of our parents' story, but that's different than having experienced what our parents have experienced. And so honoring them is about acknowledging that they've had experiences perhaps we know nothing about. The second piece of this honoring is is to give them credit that they deserve, but to not pretend that they are perfect. Uh, Last time I checked, no one had the privilege of being raised by a perfect parent. All of our parents came flawed. Some of us were raised by pretty decent parents. Some of us were raised by parents that, quite honestly, the best they could do was a lousy job. And you bear the scars of that. And that's a struggle. How do you honor that? Well, you honor that by recognizing that they came to that task damaged. And they did the best they could with what they had. And what they had wasn't a lot. And what they gave you wasn't enough. But they did the best they could. Somehow we need to pray that God would give us the grace to forgive even in the light of bad parenting. Forgiveness frees us more than it frees them and gives us the opportunity to move forward. Remember, the way we treat our parents is the way we are training our children to treat us when we are older. Someone once said, "Uh, be careful, these kids are going to pick your nursing home. There it is. The way you treat your parents, the way you honor your parents, you are training your children to honor you 
in a similar fashion. So not only are godly mothers called to honor, but also godly mothers are called to respect is the word I'm using. I'm taking this from that text that says, do not exasperate your children. What does it mean to exasperate children? Well, first of all, it, it, exasperating children is all about knowing who your child is. Here's what Skevington Wood says on his text. He says, the everyday tensions of family life are in view here. Fathers and mothers must not make unreasonable demands. Otherwise, children being overcorrected may lose heart. Skevington Wood sees in this biblical directive a call to be sensitive to the personality and emotional well-being of the child. The parents, moms, dads, the parents are to be firm but tread lightly so as not to traumatize the child emotionally. N.T. Wright follows that up with a comment where he says, Paul refers to the constant nagging or belittling of a child when he's talking about exasperating, he says it's a sure sign of insecurity, this time on the part of the parent. The refusal to allow children to be people in their own right instead of a carbon copy of their parents or of their parents' fantasies. You see, children are to be treated like, children treated like this, I'm sorry, become discouraged, dispirited, exasperated. Hearing continually, both verbally and non-verbally, that they are of little value, they come to believe it and either sink down in obedient self-hatred or overreact with boastful but anxious self-assertion. The parent's duty is, in effect, to live out the gospel to the child. That is, to assure their children that they are loved and accepted and valued for who they are, not for who they ought to be, should have been, or might if only they'd try a little harder, become. Both Wood and Wright are, are, are recognizing those situations where, where parents are riding a child so hard, demanding so much that they are causing emotional difficulties and emotional trauma in the life of that child. Instead, we need to be respecting our children and taking time out to learn who they are and then gently work with their unique personality to develop the best possible outcome. Let's be honest. How many of you have more than one child? And you treat them all exactly the same, right? You raised them all exactly the same. You didn't change anything in any of the children, right? No. Because every one of us is unique. My parents managed six kids. I'm not sure how that worked. Because let me be honest, their, their experience with their first one was difficult. Then we have kind of four in the middle that kind of got... By the time we got to the sixth child, I think they said, you know what, we're tired of trying to figure this out. Figure it out on your own, dude. We cannot treat every child the same. The notion to respect a child is about figuring out the personality and the quirkiness of each child and, and working with them in a unique manner so that they can develop into the, the man or woman of God God's called them to be. We cannot just cookie-cutter approach to parenting. Moms, you are specifically positioned for this because, let's be honest, Moms are tuned in more to the inner life of the child than dads are. One, they often spend more time with the child than dads do. And two, it's not an excuse, but we guys have a hard time connecting that way. Doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Dads, you don't get off the hook on that. But, but wives, mothers, have an ability to do that in a way that dads often lack. Every child is different. What worked with one may not work with another. I learned this very obviously working with a family who had raised two young adult daughters. The girls both went to college, entered life wildly successful, quite honestly. But they had then later in life, they had adopted a Russian boy. He came with attachment issues from being adopted, um, and he was ADHD. 
The parents were at the end of their ropes by the time he hit adolescence. They just couldn't figure out what to do with him. So they talked to me, and I connected them with a child psychologist who interviewed the child and interviewed the parents and then set the parents down. He said, Mom, Dad, you guys did a marvelous job raising your daughters. Forget everything you learned. This kid's completely different. You can't do this the way you did it last time. It will not work. And they completely retool how they approach that son. Maybe you're wondering why it's not working with this child. Maybe tuning in to who they are as an individual could help. Here's the second part of respecting a child. It's not just knowing who they are individually, but it's realizing that children are children. They're not adults. They may be nearly six foot tall and 175 pounds, but you know what? That brain's not done growing yet. Science has shown that our brains mature at about age 25. Think about that. We let them drive at 16 and pilot a lethal weapon. We let them vote at 18. We let them pick a college at 18. We let them drink at 21. Most of them are married by the time they're 25, and their brain isn't even done developing. Doesn't that explain a lot? So when their brain's not done developing, don't expect them to have really clear, well-thought-out adult thoughts. They can't. Give them some slack. I only know this, one, because of research, and two, because a spouse of mine keeps reminding me of this. Respect. Moms, we need to respect who the child is, and we need to respect what they can do. And sometimes we get a little overambitious on what they can do. Last thing we're called to do then is to instruct. It says, don't exasperate, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Listen to how um, this says this in the message. In the message, it's translated this way. Fathers, don't exasperate your children by coming down hard on them. Take them by the hand and lead them in the way of the master. What's it mean to lead a child in the way of the master? The two words in Greek are, are instruct and discipline. Discipline, guys, is always about behavior modification. It's always about changing the behavior. It's not really about a pound of flesh. It's about figuring out what works best to get this child to change that behavior. Now, as they grow, of course, your, your discipline changes, you know. When the boys were little, time out worked great. You ever try to put a 17-year-old in time out? They have a computer in their room. You send them to their room, they're all happy to stay there for hours. This is not discipline. You got that? No, you have to adjust. As they get older, you find other ways. You find out what it is that gets their attention. Uh, parents, if you haven't figured it out, that little, oh, mine's sitting in a pew, that little box that they carry, you have a lot of power. Snag that. You have their attention, their undivided attention until they get it back. And sometimes you need to take away screen time for a day or a week just to get them back to where they're thinking straight. That's the discipline part. The instruction part is all about modeling. Moms, we, we get frustrated because we want something in the end out of our children, but the question is, are we modeling that? One of the most important things I think I ever heard from Dr. Wardle, and it happened in one of the first seminars we went to, is he said, listen, folks, information does not change people experience changes people. He said, if information changed people, pastors, you would preach one sermon on love and they'd all get it. But that doesn't work, does it? And we all acknowledge that doesn't work. It's experience that changes us. We cannot say to our children, do what I say, not what I do. It doesn't work. They learn by seeing what's modeled. More is caught than taught. We have to be modeling what we want in our children. If we accept, expect them to be kind and godly and respectful, they better see that in us. 
If we want them to be positive, we better be positive, Daryl. Oh, it's just for me. Never mind. That wasn't for you guys. If we want our children to go down a certain path, we better be leading down that path, not driving from behind or driving from another path. We have to model what we want. Moms, honor parents. Respect your child. Instruct your child. Let me go back to where we started. Parenting is a very difficult assignment. Moms, do not attempt any of this without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's where your strength comes from. That's where your discernment comes from. That's what will keep you from ripping off their head when you want to and listening and saying, oh, maybe there's something else here I'm not hearing. Well, Dad, you don't get off the hook. In about four weeks, we're going to be celebrating Father's Day. And on Father's Day, Dad, this is, a, I guess, a teaser or a, or a plea to come back. We're going to talk about what it means to bless your child. What does that look like? How do we bless children? What happens if we don't? And trust me, it's not pretty. So we better learn how to do it because our children need that from us, especially from dads. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our mothers. And I thank you for the mothers that are listening today. It doesn't matter if their children are infants or toddlers, adolescents or young adults. It doesn't matter if their children are 70 years old, Father. I pray that you would remind mothers that they are still mothering. And they still have opportunities to speak into the lives of their children by honoring their parents and their parents' stories, by respecting and instructing. Father, help us to know your voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit. May it be a clear voice that we would have what we need to parent. We ask this in the name of the Christ. Amen.